Great. So over now to a very another amazing school, a very different sort of school. I think we're going to hear from Georgina Montanera and Mr. Brendan Pavey about Northbridge House. Is that right, Brendan? Do we have two people? Yeah, I think, I think uh, probably just, just me and Georgina can deal with any of the parents when they've got questions. Uh, can I just say thank you very much for having me. It's been absolutely fantastic li listening to my fellow colleagues, many of whom um, have, are new in post, and it just, the mind boggles to think they've gone into to new schools as new heads, and they've got this amazing energy still, despite the fact we've had this <laughs> unbelievable year uh, that we've just been through. I, I myself, I've been at Northbridge House since 2017. I've been in the role as executive head teacher of both senior schools since 2019. Um, and so I've been, been in, in position that I had four years ahead before that uh, in, a, in a school in Slough. Um, and it, I, I've had to use, it's been good to know the children and know the teachers and know the systems uh, when we've been going through lockdown. And, and, and my hat goes off to those, uh, those fellow head teachers and the, the, the breadth of their smiles and how well they're looking and the energy they have. So. Congratulations to them all for that. Um, my job here is to tell you a little bit about Northbridge House. Um, it's been um, really interesting to hear the other schools and, and, and they're all special schools. And, 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 and you as parents are listening uh, today to some, some amazing presentations. And, uh, and so what I'm gonna do is, is talk to you about what makes Northbridge House special. Um, just a little bit about me. I, I talked about, I'm in my, my second headship, but taking on this, this extended role about, across the senior schools. I have four of my own teenage children as well. Well, actually, one's just become 20, so she's not a teenager anymore. Um, she still feels like one. Um, and at one point, we had four children in three different independent schools. Uh, it wasn't convenient. It was challenging. Um, but what we tried to do very much, uh, my wife and I, was, was to look at the schools, look at the children, and then try and find the school that best fit them. Um, and when we were first on our journey, we weren't quite getting that right. And my, my eldest daughter was a really good fit for her old girls school. Um, and my second daughter was a very, very different personality in a year just behind. Um, and we made a really good decision at the point that she, she went to a different uh, independent school and, and plowed her own furrow. Um, so I just encourage you all to think about, um, to go and visit the schools uh, uh, that, that are talking. Uh, obviously we can't at the moment, and so we're doing things like this. Uh, the last time I did one of these, it was for the independent, uh, independent school show. And we had, uh, I was doing it from home. So it's really nice to be back in school uh, with children at the moment, but it'd be even nicer when we can invite parents back uh, and do open days in the traditional sense, uh, being able to meet in person. So I really look forward, forward to that, that moment. Um, so um, Northbridge House, um, we have two senior schools. Um, we have um, Northbridge House Canterbury, uh, which is in a, a very historic building. Um, it is 230 children aged 11 to 18. And we have Northbridge House uh, Hampstead, which is uh, just off Roslyn Hill, off the high street, tucked away um, with 440 children now. Um, and that's just an 11 to 16 campus. So the sixth form uh, is in the Canterbury campus. Uh, so we have two thriving uh, schools that have been doing really, really well over recent years. Um, and unlike some of our, um, some of the other schools this evening, one, one of the reasons um, that, that Hilary reminds us that it's a, a, bit, a little bit different as a, as a school is that we are truly mixed ability. Um, we do assess on entry, but that's more to give us a bit of a baseline. Um, and then on top of that, we look at um, the character reference from the school, the reference, uh, as well as an interview. Um, and we're looking for children who can make the most of, of the opportunities that, that we have here. Uh, we try to think that some children really thrive at primary school. Um, other children find it more difficult, um, but we're not predetermined necessarily in terms of our academic outcomes when we're 10 years old. So hopefully our attitude is that, that everybody can uh, really progress when they're with us. Um, and we, we put three strands in place to try and help children really achieve more than they might have believed possible. The first of those is academic excellence. Um, obviously you expect that from any school and we, we sort of take that as a given. Uh, we really work hard with the children to build their confidence and, and have some brilliant teachers working with them uh, to ensure that they get really really good results for them whatever that looks like so that might be straight nines and some children in our schools do get straight nines at GCSE and, and brilliant A levels and go off to Oxford and Cambridge uh, but other children um, have a different um, level of academic ability uh, and we will hopefully get them all to their potential uh, that's what we're looking for uh, with the academic excellence strand um, character and uh, global mindset are the other two strands so with regards to, to character, we, we build that around three strands. 
um, we talk about the resilience, the agency, and the metacognition. Now, the character education piece, it's not just about being thrown on top of a Dartmoor and finding your own way home, although that's really good, and we do have Duke of Edinburgh, but it's also about those small conversations that take place every day in the classroom. Um, the idea of this pit of learning that they find themselves in and how are they going to get out of it? How are they going to overcome these barriers? And we work hard uh, in, in that sense, in terms of the resilience, um, the metacognitive strategies to help them get out of that pit. And then the agency that we want our children to leave our school, either at 16 or 18, really feeling they can make a difference um, in society. Uh, it's as we'd hope for any of our children. And I'm really, really proud of the children coming out of our schools. Uh, and I think they're a great advert for, for the type of education that we pr provide at Northridge House. And then finally, the global mindset. Um, you may or may not be aware we're part of the Cognitive Organization. We've got over 80 schools around the world. Um, just before this latest to return to school, I was talking to a head teacher colleague in Spain because they've been wearing masks for quite a long time. And so I was trying to learn some of the techniques. Did the transparent masks work? Apparently not. Um, and so there's lots of learning on a daily basis, um, but also for an experience point, from an experience point of view for the children. They are always look, we are always looking for ways to expand their global mindset. They're in a global city. They're going to go into a global marketplace where the, the people they're working um, with are going to have global mindsets and the jobs that they're going for are going to be globally competitive. So we really want to get them thinking um, globally with a great character, getting the very best results that they possibly can. And if you've heard me talk before, that's all important. But the most important thing for me on a daily basis is I want your children to enjoy coming to school. I want them to love coming to school. Now, they are teenagers. They're not going to love coming to school every day. Although right now, just having shown someone around the school this afternoon, they're like, it's great to be back in school, isn't it? And they were like, yeah, no, we love being back in school. So that has been one of the nice outcomes of, of, of COVID. Um, but really, every day I want the children to, to enjoy coming to school. We do an awful lot around uh, working with our teams to make sure that the children are loving coming to school, are really happy coming to school. We have an amazing pastoral team that really try and remove those barriers so they're not worried about what's going on at home. Difficult things will crop up as they go through the teenage years. And we will look to put in a very high support, low stress model to help your children get the very, very best uh, academic results that they can, but also build that character and that global mindset uh, into, into their education. Um, so we're very proud of the results we get. You can see them on our website. Um, they're, they're, they're superb for mixed ability in a, a truly mixed ability school. Um, when you apply to the school and, and applications have already um, open for next uh, September uh, and close in about November, um, we will assess your children. We will interview them. Uh, we will look for that reference. So again, please make sure they're being very nice to their primary schools. Make sure they're being very nice to their teachers in primary school, and particularly their head teachers, Hillary. Uh, make sure you've got a nice uh, relationship with them. Um, and, and we're looking for really good kids who, who want to, to enjoy uh, coming to our schools. Our school, uh, North Bush House Senior Schools, over the last few years have seen a, re a real boost. Uh, we're seeing lots and lots of applicants uh, coming for our schools. Um, so it's really good. It's really buzzing. It's really thriving. I'm, I'm very proud uh, to work with the teams that I work with. Um, we have uh, two great buildings, but we use London as our playground, as all these, these schools will do. We're, we're not blessed like Seven Oaks by that nice green space and historic buildings, um, but we do use London as our playground uh, to make sure that we, we give them through Key Stage 3 at Canterbury, for example, without any sporting facility on site, we take them through 18 different sporting activities through their years seven, eight and nine because we can use all the different facilities around. It's not just um, rugby, hockey, cricket or something uh, like that. So it, we, we make an opportunity from, from that particular challenge. Uh, so please do get in contact. Georgina um, is available to, to um, pick up any emails or phone calls by calling the, the admissions team. She will make her uh, details available for that. Um, but I really, really hope that we'll be able to welcome uh, you uh, to Northbridge House to have a look around. Um, as I say, every school has a slightly different um, feel to it, and I think there's no substitute. You can listen to me talk, you can listen to the other head teachers talk, you can look, look at our brochures and our, our, our um, um, promotional marketing leaflets, but you get that nothing replaces actually going into school uh, when children are there. So please do look out for the open days, and particularly in uh, September when, fingers crossed, we can be welcoming people back into, into school for tours. Um, and I really, really look forward to hopefully meeting some of you in person. So thank you very much, Larry.